waves involve a disturbance from the equilibrium position which travels from one region to another. Mechanical waves, such as water, sound and shock waves, travel through a medium. Progressive waves distribute energy from a point source to the surrounding area. For example, circular waves caused by a rain droplet on a pond. The direction in which the particle displacement occurs, in relation to the direction in which the wave travels, affects its properties. All waves can be categorized as one of two types, transverse or longitudinal. In transverse waves, the direction of the particle movement is perpendicular to the direction of the wave's propagation. Examples include water waves and all electromagnetic waves. In longitudinal waves, the direction of the particle motion is the same as the direction of the wave's propagation. The particle movement is a series of compressions and rarefactions. Sound waves are an example of longitudinal waves. This diagram shows the two types of wave established on a slinky spring. The particle motion in a transverse wave can be in one of an infinite number of planes perpendicular to the direction of the wave's propagation. This is known as an unpolarized wave. Polarization is the process by which a wave's oscillations are made to occur in one plane only. In order to polarize a wave, it is effectively passed through a grid of parallel bars. Only the oscillations in a plane parallel to those bars can pass through. When waves pass through gaps or around obstacles, they spread out. This is known as diffraction. The nearer the slit size is to the wavelength of the wave, the greater the diffraction of the wave. Both transverse and longitudinal waves can be diffracted. Davison and Germer discovered that electron beams can also be diffracted. This shows that particles exhibit wave properties and supported de Broglie's theory of wave-particle duality. When considering the behavior of two coherent waves from sources close to each other, relationships between them must be considered. The difference in the distance between each source and a particular point is known as the path difference. It can be measured in meters or wavelengths. The phase difference is the amount by which two waves with similar frequencies are at different stages in their oscillations at a given time. It can be measured in wavelengths, degrees, or radians. One complete oscillation is equivalent to one wavelength, 360 degrees, or two pi radians. This diagram shows waves with a phase difference of one quarter of a wavelength, 90 degrees, or pi over two radians. Waves are said to be coherent if they have the same wavelength and there is a constant phase relationship between the two waves. Due to the fact that all waves contain imperfections, this can only occur if waves from a single monochromatic source are split into two so that the imperfections occur simultaneously. When two coherent waves overlap, their displacements combine and interference can be observed. The combined effect at a point can be found by calculating the algebraic sum of their individual displacements. When the identical waves are either exactly in phase or half a wavelength out of phase, the resultant amplitude is either double the amplitude of an original wave or zero. The interference of waves placed on top of one another is called superposition. It occurs when two or more waves overlap, regardless of whether or not they are coherent. The principle of superposition 
states that the resultant particle displacement at any point is the sum of the separate displacements of the wave at that point. It is possible to show the effects of superposition using laboratory equipment. The apparatus is set up as shown in this diagram. The light source is monochromatic and the double slit ensures that the light sources interfering are coherent. It is clear that interference occurs. The pattern of light and dark patches shown on the screen is known as an interference fringe. The dark areas on this fringe show the places where the two waves are 180 degrees out of phase when they hit the screen. As a result, destructive interference occurs and they cancel each other out. The bright areas are the places where the two waves are exactly in phase when they hit the screen. This means that constructive interference occurs and the wave's amplitudes reinforce each other. If the slit separation, fringe separation, and the distance from the slit to the screen are measured, then the wavelength of the light passing through the slits can be calculated using this formula. Standing waves are set up as a result of the superposition of two waves with the same amplitude and frequency traveling at the same speed in opposite directions. Standing waves are also known as stationary waves. This does not mean that nothing is moving, but that the positions of the crests and troughs are stationary. The parts of the wave where the amplitude is always zero are called nodes. Halfway between each node, where the amplitude is at a maximum, are points called antinodes. The lowest possible frequency at which a standing wave can be set up in a closed pipe is called the fundamental, or first harmonic. At higher frequencies, which are multiples of the fundamental, other patterns appear. These are called overtones. In a closed pipe, the wave must end in an antinode, so only odd multiples of the fundamental frequency will establish a standing wave. In an open pipe, both the open ends must be antinodes as the air must be free to move here. All points between the nodes of the vibrations are in phase. When a wave is incident on a surface, it is either absorbed, transmitted, or reflected. If a wave is reflected, then its angle of incidence upon a plane surface will be equal to its angle of reflection. During reflection, the incident ray, reflected ray, and normal are all in the same plane. The distance between the image and the mirror is equal to the distance between the object and the mirror. The image is laterally inverted. This is why writing appears back to front in a mirror. The image is the same size as the object. The image is virtual, as there is no light coming from it. Waves are bent at the boundaries between two mediums of different densities. This bending is called refraction. When a wave travels from a less dense to a more dense medium, it is refracted towards the normal. Snell discovered that the signs of the angles of incidence and refraction have a constant ratio to each other. The speed of the wave in medium 1 divided by the speed of the wave in medium 2 is also a constant. The ratio of sine i over sine r is known as the refractive index. The refractive index can also be calculated by finding the ratio of the speed of the wave in the first medium to the speed of the wave in the second medium. Refraction occurs because waves change their speed when they enter another medium. 
the wave's frequency remains constant, but when a wave enters a more dense medium, its wavelength decreases. As velocity equals frequency times wavelength, the wave's velocity also decreases. If a wave travels from a dense medium in which it is traveling slowly into a less dense medium, it is refracted away from the normal. If the angle of incidence is too large, then sine i will be greater than 1. As the sine of an angle cannot be greater than 1, refraction is not possible. The angle at which n sine i equals 1 is called the critical angle. At this angle of incidence, the wave will be refracted along the boundary of the mediums. If the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle, no wave energy can escape from the boundary and it is reflected. Because no energy escapes, this is called total internal reflection. This phenomenon has many practical applications and is widely used in fiber optic cables for telecommunications, medical imaging, and prismic binoculars.